we're pretty much gonna get stuck in our spawn so here let me just try to explain something real quick like what you should do in this situation all right so now that they have the a and the b flag if they have the b flag you're pretty much reduced to this area only right here it's gonna be so hard now to advance to the middle of the map so what you want to do now is pretty much patrol the house the house is your only defense it's what you can do take high ground as i do here now you know granted it may not be perfect but it does help me take out opponents one by one as you can see here we are going to be breaking down a gameplay nuketown is highly regarded as one of the most sweatiest maps and i figured you know this would be a good gameplay to show you guys because i'm absolutely sweating my butt off in this gameplay particularly we have some highlights we've got some low lights and i just want to talk about exactly what things i could have done better what things are actually just unavoidable what things we can capitalize on moving forward and you know it's best to always look at your gameplays and now that there's a theater mode in cold war uh this is a very good idea for you guys to do on your own so if you guys want me to break down your personal gameplay it's really straightforward to submit your gameplay all you have to do is follow me on twitter and when i post a tweet saying like hey i'm about to go ahead and review some gameplays you need to reply to that tweet and post your youtube link and i will get to those reviews in the order that i do receive them with that said if you're a brand new to this channel and you want to make your way back to more call of duty and you want to make your bit and you want to wake and i want and you want to make your way back to the call of duty con and you want to make your way back to the call of duty channel and you want to make your way back to my and you make your one and you want to make your way back to more and you want to make your way back to some more call of duty content make sure to hit the subscribe button turn on notifications leave a like on this video so that i know that this is the kind of content that you do want to continue to see all right so let's just get straight into the gameplay here so i'm just going to be pausing and playing and reacting to whatever is going on in the game and some tips and advice that i can give you guys so that it can help you out in your gameplay so uh, let me go ahead and press play here so the first thing that I like to do in Nuketown is take control of the middle of the map. This is very important. If you do not take control of the middle of the map early on in the game, it's either you get spawn trapped or they spawn trap you. So obviously we want to spawn trap the enemy. You know, that's just really the reality of it on Nuketown. And that's what it boils down to because there's really only uh, two areas of the map here. Let me just pause it real quick. So as you can see, our team is just only spawning from the C flag right now because obviously we have the C flag. Uh, however, However, you know this works both ways for TDM and kill confirm uh, but the enemy team is spawning in from a now if I were to control the middle of the map right here where the buses and the truck is and pretty much just gatekeep them from advancing forward into the map then I'm gonna be able to have more an advantage because they just keep on coming to me and I don't need to worry about you know just running into random areas here and getting picked off you know and that's how Nuketown can get very frustrating and it's also very important to not ever push the spawns because then that will flip everything and then all your hard work of trying to control the middle of the map is just gonna go down the drain but anyways let's go ahead and continue the gameplay so right here I'm just playing the middle of the map you know if you pay close attention I don't go past a certain point when it's the very beginning of the match i always like to take it nice slow and easy because you want to take a you want to feel out the opponents you know you don't want to you know rush too hard because you want to know how these guys play so these guys are playing the objective pretty hard you know which is expected we're playing in domination but at the same time i'm also noticing these patterns that they just keep pushing forward so this is going to allow me to get a lot more kills now i'm playing in a party with apollo who's uh, by the way he's the owner of carnage clan and i also am part of carnage clan so we were pretty much you know uh, sweating our butts off here and as you can see you know no shade on apollo at all like i love the guy but i remember him telling me while we were playing this game like how are you doing so well you know how are you pulling this off because the competition we were playing against it was super sweaty so the difference is because i was playing more defensive you know when enemies are playing on the offensive side the best thing to do is to contrast that and play defensive and that's really the best solution that you have against you know more experienced players players who are playing very aggressive now uh, i'm gonna get into more details of you know what you can do to switch up your play style as the gameplay progresses but as you can see i just keep going back and forth back and forth from one line of sight to another and right there i just lost a gunfight you know plain and simple you know that's on me it's not because of i'm doing something wrong here so now i'm just looking at my war machine i have a war machine i'm not going to call it in just yet just because with the way score streaks work in this game i know it's going to take a significantly longer time to earn it so i'm just going to go ahead and save it for times when i actually really need it all right so it looks like now they're pushing the b flag thanks to my teammates they've actually captured the b flag so i'm playing rather defensive for my teammates you know there's always somebody who is an objective player 
player who is an aggressive player and a defensive player. I'm playing the defensive role right now. So me doing that allows my teammates to go ahead and capture the flag. So in a way, I am pretty much being a team player. And here I am again. I pull out my uh, my Sigma to be able to take out any score streaks that they have in the air. That's definitely a first thing that you want to do when you're playing against these teams is to take out their air support as much as possible. Because once they've got that air support up in the air, it's pretty much over. It's really hard to get back to the flag. And that's a wrap about that. So uh, one also key thing that I'm paying attention to is my mini map. Now you hear this every time in Call of Duty, but it is because it is the most important thing in Call of Duty. Without the minimap, it would be so much harder to predict the enemy movement and also make educated decisions on what you need to do next. So because of the minimap, you know, I'm always constantly looking at it. So now I'm going to, you know, of course, take out the guy in front of me. And then also at the same time, I'm quickly glancing at the minimap. And I'm also checking my back, you know, because you never know when enemies slip by your teammates. You know, you don't always want to ever take that risk. All right. So notice here, I, I look directly above at the window, and that's because I did see the ping on the enemy uh, uh, UAV, on the UAV, I mean. So now I back up a little bit, you know, th that's because the enemy team, they've unfortunately called in a VTOL. So, you know, when there's killstreaks out there, don't even risk it. Don't even try to ego challenge it. Just, you know, find cover. Now, uh, I'm about to make a huge mistake here, which I should have, you know, done better and known better is you know i went outside i got a little greedy i thought hey maybe i can get a kill and then boom <laughs> i actually got picked off by the vtol so what i'm going to try to do now is attempt to take it down and you know i don't know what's going on with some of these score streaks but i find it really difficult to take them out as you can see it's not even locking on right away and that's very frustrating uh but either way even if it means taking a couple of deaths it's still worth trying to take it down if you have the right uh, weapon obviously you want the sigma because it's better than just running out there getting repeatedly dying getting repeated repeated deaths oh, i can't even talk you know what i'm saying so it's better to just take it out right away you know tell your teammates like hey let's take that out right away you know work together you know you can use artillery strike or you know some other equipment that will take that down as well you know that's just something to consider now, the reason why I stopped shooting at it is because I saw that the enemies actually captured the flag. And that means that once they capture the flag, um, and also, by the way, the VTOL's gone. Once they capture the flag, we're pretty much going to get stuck in our spawn. So here, let me just try to explain something real quick, like what you should do in this situation. All right, so now that they have the A and the B flag, like I said earlier, you mainly want to take control of the middle of the map and you just pick them off as they come out of their spawn, right? If they have the B flag, you're pretty much reduced to this area only right here. It's going to be so hard now to advance to the middle of the map because the enemies likely have control of the middle of the map, which means when you come out of your spawn, you're going to get killed. So obviously that's a huge problem. So what you want to do now is pretty much patrol the house. The house is your only defense. It's what you can do. Take high ground as I do here. Now, you know, granted, it may not be perfect, but it does help me take out opponents one by one. As you can see here, I was able to get off uh, on two kills right there. I'm checking my mini map. I see an enemy down here and he's actually taking out my teammates. This guy's moving pretty quickly. And, you know, I felt like I should have killed that guy, but he got lucky. He got saved by the bell. We're not actually doing too bad here. 32 and seven. And uh, of course, I got the best play of the game here because, you know, I'm Turbo Man. Let's go, baby. Uh, but yeah, this was just a, a quick display of the first half of what I usually do. The situations have flipped. We are now on the A side. I'm going to capture the A flag. And again, trying to be a team player. I'm going to take out those UAVs. The more information the enemy has, the more advantage they will have. Because chances are your teammates are probably not wearing ghosts. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe eight times out of ten. My teammates are usually never wearing ghosts, so that's a huge problem. All right, so I made a big mistake here. I got a little too aggressive, and I tried to push, and that's exactly what happens. You're going to get taken out by people camping in the window. That right side of the map is extremely hard to push because of that power position of that window. And as you can see, it's actually really hard for me to get past that. What I'm trying to do is try to get into their house at the C flag, because once you do that, it's so easy to just start picking off the enemies as they spawn into the game as you can see here i'm pre-aiming already into that corner because i know that's where they're spawning in from and there's two over here oh i actually got three no wait did i get two i only got two of them there what the hell uh but anyways now the spawns have flipped see this is exactly what happens it's not because of what i did it's because of my teammates my teammates were the ones who flipped the spawn so that's very unfortunate obviously and as you can see i still have my uh my war machine haven't used it yet so the reason why I decided to push up there is because I saw that I had another teammate pushing up and there weren't a lot of enemies in the mid line of the map. So I figured, okay, it's okay to push. So this is 
pretty much transitioning into the second half of this strategy that I like to run on Nuketown is that, you know, once you start to get into this area that I'm at right now, this is a very great position. This is where you can hold them at their spawn and kill them as they're coming in just like this. Again, unfortunately, I missed my shot. You know, that's all on me. But, you know, however, someone with a much better accuracy accuracy shot who wouldn't choke that would definitely kill that guy. So the main. Uh, OK, again, now <laughs> the spawns are 100 percent going to flip now because we're deep in their spawn. I know that there's somebody upstairs here. I saw the, the red ping on my mini map and I'm going to go ahead and check it out. There's nothing. There's nothing here. Maybe my teammate killed them. So now I immediately run to the other end of the map because I know that the spawns are going to flip. So I'm pretty much predicting where the enemies are going to be at. So I'm going to try to do the same exact thing. See exactly where I'm at. So like, let's just pause it right here. Just imagine that this was the A house, you know, the greenhouse, right? We're in the yellow house. They're pretty much built almost similarly as far as like, you know, how the houses are made, etc. You know, they're just pretty much mirror images of each other. So me standing here is pretty much almost the same as me standing in that garage where I get a clear view of their spawn and they'll literally spawn in front of you. But you will never see me really venture out anywhere past this area. So let's just keep in, uh, playing it now. 100% uh, the spawns are going to flip again. You know, this is something that you cannot control if you're playing with a bunch of randoms. You know, like I said, I was playing with Apollo. He knows better. So I know it's not on him. But as you can see, I did take out those UAVs once again. You know, once you see that, you get into the habit of taking down those score streaks. Now, the body armor, I really like the body armor. It saved my life a couple times. And I think it's uh, pretty much worth it using if you want to stay alive as long as possible. And you never know, it could save you from, you know, getting a nuke if something like that. So I noticed a lot of my teammates were dying out here. You know, these these uh, blue skulls, they indicate that my teammates have died. So that's pretty much a warning sign. Like, hey, if I go out there, I'm most likely going to get picked off too. Literally, four of my teammates got picked off. I mean, you know, chances are the same thing is going to happen to me because I'm going to be outnumbered. So, you know, all my teammates are here. No one's going to back me up. So the best thing to do is just to play defensive once again, get high ground. And I'm just going to peek out this window. I'm going to pre-aim down areas where I feel like the enemies might be. And I'm also going to keep checking my back. You know, I never, I never, ever ADS in one spot for too long, ever. You know, of course, there are special, special circumstances for that. But, you know, you never want to do that because you never know when there's going to be an enemy that's going to be flanking you from behind who's wearing ninja, etc., etc. That's going to be a bad, bad turnout. So, as you can see here, I reacted quickly. They were uh, capturing the C flag, so I turned around. So, I'm actually still in a good spot. So, I see somebody coming through the door here. I back up a little bit just to give myself some space between myself and the enemy. Unfortunately, the RC car killed me here. You know, like, what are the chances of that, right? But the fact that I gave myself some breathing room between myself and the enemy was really smart thing to do and that's what you should do as well you know don't just you know sit there and wait for the enemy to come to you you know put yourself if you have the time in a better position you know pre-aim and get ready for that gunfight and I, got, I don't know if you guys noticed but that guy had a shotgun as well so those are things that you have to keep notice of as well like you know if you notice him wearing, holding a shotgun then you best believe you better make that distance a lot farther so that his accuracy is not going to be as accurate all right so uh, again spawns have flipped and you know there's nothing you can do against a war machine like let's be real here uh however i do i do like the war machine a lot i think it's very overpowered and uh i i, I don't think it needs any tuning at all honestly maybe they could reduce the amount of uh, uh ammo it has maybe by one or something like that but other than that i really like the war machine it, uh, it's so fun to use all right so i'm playing just a little bit more aggressive here because i feel like my teammate needs someone to be more of a slayer somebody to just hold the enemies down so that my teammates can capture the flag you know because if i'm the only one in this team who is actually capable of you know getting a lot of kills besides apollo you know us too we can't just do it ourselves you know that means that we have to do the dirty work and kill the opponents so that our teammates can actually play the objective safely all right so <clears throat> So we're getting down to the wire here. We're down by 10, 100%. There's no hope. And I decided, okay, well, maybe I can try. Maybe we can try for a triple cap. I'll hop on the flag one time. And then notice how I'm using this head glitch to give me some protection. You know, you got to use those things. And I'll always notice, you know, where you could potentially be shot from. So always take good consideration of those lines of sights. All right. And oh, another thing. I know somebody's going to ask me about the class setup. Check the link down below in the uh, for the class setup. So this is just a last ditch effort, you know, to just save the flag from being captured. But pretty much uh, this is definitely going to be the end of the gameplay here. Um, you know, we had a lot of highs and we had a lot of lows. And there's definitely some take home tips that you can uh, definitely definitely learn from this and apply to your own game. So as you can see, 
We ended up with 51 eliminations or kills or whatever. I don't know why they call it eliminations uh, and 20 deaths. You know, we had the most score because you get more score from the more kills that you actually get in game. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys did learn something. Like I said, if you want me to break down your gameplay, make sure to follow me on Twitter. Link is going to be down below in the description with some instructions. And uh, yeah, let's get this series popping, man. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave a like if you did and make sure to subscribe if you want to make your way back to some more Call of Duty content. Let's go, baby.